Of course, they are not applied directly on the heart, but just for simplicity, draw it like this. SC node, yes, what is it? AV node. So this beautiful heart, when it was beating, this ECG trace was, tracing was made. Now we can correlate. If P wave is on two and a half small square, atrial depolarization spread was 0.1 second. If PR segment is two and a half small square, current was held in AV node for how much time? 0.1 second. If QRS complex is drawn over two and a half small sec, two and a half small squares, it means current released from AV node and spread over the ventricular tissue took how much time? 0.1 second. And if someone asked you how much time is taken by the total depolarization of atrium plus current passing through AV node. That is P wave plus PR segment equal to PR interval 0.1 plus 0.1 is equal to 0.2. Is it difficult? So today when you go and find ECG, just look the waves and intervals they are drawn on how many small squares and you know exactly what is there. Is that right? Now we have done three two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. So three two and a half makes seven and a half. Am I right? You are intelligent enough to know that the three two and a half are equal to how much? Seven and a half. And if you put one more two and a half, how much it becomes? Okay. Ten. Is it difficult to remember ten? Ten small squares? So up to now seven and a half small squares are there. The next important whole activity is 10 small squares. What is that? The most important interval is now this was PR interval, this was PR interval. From here, from the beginning of ventricular depolarization and up to the end of ventricular repolarization it takes 10 small squares. Let me tell you. QRS, again let me tell you. When current enters into ventricle, from that time, when current enters into, if it is released from the AV node, it will make QRS complex, then ST segment, and then repolarization will occur, and it will make the T wave. So, onset of ventricular depolarization, up to the termination of ventricular repolarization, from the beginning of the ventricular depolarization up to the end of ventricular repolarization, what is drawn? QRS is drawn, then what is made? ST segment is made and then what is made? Yes, T wave is made. Hold this thing from this point up to this point is QT interval. Hold this thing take 10 to 11 small squares. How many small squares? 10 to 11 small squares. So we say whole ventricular electrical activity is drawn over how many small squares? Ten small squares, just to memorize it, easy. Ten small squares are how much time duration? Of course, it's so easy. The ten small square into every small square is equal to 0 0.04 is equal to 0 0.4 seconds. So what should be the duration of QT interval? QT interval. What should be the duration of QT interval? Yes, please. 0.4 seconds. Usually it is 10 or 11 small square. If you see that it has gone up to 11, for example in some patient, T wave has gone up to this 11, then what, what is duration? 0.44 seconds. 0.44 seconds, 11. Is that right? So let's recap how we started the concept of timings and durations of different waves and segments and interval on the ECG paper. Right? First you have to remember, when you look at the ECG paper, one big square is how much time duration? Yes, please. 0.2 second. And one small square is how much time duration? 0.04 seconds. Say it loudly. Why you are afraid? One small square is equal to how much time? 0.04. 4 seconds. Not difficult to remember? Now next things are very easy. It takes 2 and a half small square. P wave is usually 2 and a half small square. PR segment is 2 and a half small square. QRS complex is 2 and a half small square. But QT interval, we start from the beginning of QRS and terminate at the end of the T wave, takes how many small squares? 
10 small squares. Now you know all the durations in every combination. Am I clear? Right? So, the boys who are really sharp, they make it 2 to 3 small squares rather than saying 2 and a half. If you want to make a range, you know, each, our heart has not studied our book and mostly the heart have not taken my lecture also. So, they may slightly vary. They don't abide by the, these rules strictly. So, if you are really very clever, you can say QRS complex may be 2 to 3 small squares, but actually you have to remember the central figure 2 and a half. So, if someone asks, what is the duration of QRS complex, right? You will calculate what is the duration of 2 small squares and 3 small squares. If someone asks you, what is the duration of P wave, again be diplomatic. Say P wave is, be thoughtful like a big cardiologist. P wave, I think it should be usually 2 to 3 small squares. Then you tell time duration. 2 small squares, you know that 0 0.08. And 3 small squares is 0 0.12. I think you know what. So you say, yes, I think P wave should be drawn over 0 0.08 second to, in some cases, up to 0 0.12 second. But if more than that, maybe there is some pathology. Are you understanding? But basic thing is same. The central figure is two and a half for P wave, two and a half for PR segment, two and a half for QRS, and from beginning of the QRS up to the end of T wave is approximately 10 to 11. That's so easy. Am I clear? So this was some basic concept related with the timings of different waves, segments, and interval when you look at the calibrated ECG paper, right? So what we have discussed up to now in ECG, the whole concept of teaching you ECG was that this was a whole lecture about the very basics of the ECG, right? Basics of ECG means that I was not telling you the advanced ECG. First, you have to learn the basic ECG, that what are the electrical events in the heart, how different electrical events make different electrical vectors and how those electrical vectors fluctuate the needle of ECG machine and eventually how different ECG patterns are made, what are different waves, what are different segments, what are different intervals and all these ECG patterns, waves, segments and intervals, they are related with what type of different cardiac electrical events. Is that right? But you must know, when electrical event in the heart, electrical activity in the heart becomes abnormal, then of course, heart develops normal cardiac vectors or abnormal cardiac vectors? Abnormal cardiac vector. And when heart develops abnormal cardiac vector, then of course, ECG pattern will also become abnormal. Is that right? So, about the abnormal ECG and arrhythmia, we will discuss into detail, but in the future lectures related with the advanced ECG. That's all about the very basis of the ECG. Is there any question? No. Okay, good luck with your career in cardiology. Class dismissed.